Hello everybody, I thought what I'd show here is just a little bit of a, a run through how I've been producing the um, forecast for the gold outlook since we reached the highs uh, up in, well, back in August um, where, we, where we sort of got past $2,000. So this is a little bit of a look at how, um, with a weather forecasting background, I'm assessing what's going on at the moment in, in precious metals. Um, as, the, as the slide says, the storm clouds were gathering back in uh, August, and as a weather forecaster, um, I, I sort of compare things to, to my day job, and hurricanes begin with thunderstorms over, uh, over North Africa. These thunderstorms get caught up in the easterly jet stream, and they move out off of the uh, west coast of North Africa and form larger areas of, of thunderstorms. And these are the very beginnings of, of hurricanes. It's how hurricanes are born. Uh, in terms of the gold market and the precious metals market, we had a long run up from the March lows of around or just above $1,400, all the way up above $2,000, so $600 or so. And the indicators were becoming uh, stretched and we were moving to levels that are historically associated with um, sort, of, sort of a danger level, I suppose you could say. So in my mind, the storm clouds were, were gathering and signs were starting to point to likelihood of some sort of correction. If you look back through my Twitter feed, um, I sort of commented on, on that at the time. And this top chart, well, this chart in the top right-hand corner is one that I produced in August. And um, rather than thinking that what had been going on there was going to sort of reverse and go back upwards and we were going to sort of continue up towards two and a half thousand dollars or, or whatever. In my mind, the likelihood uh, was that we would see some sort of um, prolonged period, several weeks to months of uh, correction. So my first attempt um, at sh showing that sort of in, uh, took us back down to somewhere between $1,700 and $1,800 as a strong area of horizontal support above the March lows and um, also coinciding with some Fibonacci retracement levels. The, so, so that part of it, I think, was, was pretty, um, as it turns out, you know, a pretty reasonable assessment. But what wasn't right um, is the time sort of element because the price action hadn't sort of really built out sufficiently at that stage. It's a little bit hard to to pin down just, you know, the sort of time period that we're, we're going to need or the time period that we're going to be in when the price hits that sort of 17 to 1800 target area. Anyway, so um, the second chart on the sort of bottom right hand side, a little bit later in August, um, we've got a bit more price action going on. Uh, that allows us to put that sort of top line, um, resistance line, a little bit more accurately. Um, it's not quite where it needs to be in light of more recent price action, but um, it, it's a lot closer and it does show um, price reaching that 1800 level in October. Um, so going back to weather forecasting analogies, um, as the forecast develops and as uh, the process develops in terms of predicting whether it's deep areas of low pressure here in the UK or whether it's um, hurricanes moving out from Africa across the Atlantic towards the United States, the next sort of process involves gathering evidence, observations, satellite data and um, monitoring what's actually happening compared to what the computer models are thinking is going to happen. So in this case, the computer model, if you like, is my projection, which is shown with uh, this particular chart, uh, which I did in September in the top right hand portion of this slide. Um, that's, if you like, the computer model or computer projection. Um, the next thing is to sort of monitor what's happening in real time to see if price action is matching up to, to my expectations. So. At the point that I did this chart in September, price was starting to break out of what I'd identified as being the most likely correction pattern. So starting to have some doubts about whether the target at $1,800 or less was going to be reached. 
and uh, reduced the likelihood of that down to 20%, but certainly didn't ever discount it because, well, for a number of reasons, which were explained in my tweets at the time. Um, so, so that um, process indicated perhaps a change in the forecast, but then um, as time went by, it became clear that the original forecast was, was closer to the mark. The chart on the bottom right hand um, corner sort of um, discusses at a later date in September, the um, projected target areas um, to, the, to the downside. As the, as the correction continues and that's very similar to weather forecasting and monitoring how the forecast goes and whether the storm is actually moving in the direction that you expect it to move and if it is slightly um, moving in the direction that's slightly different to what you forecast then you have to reassess your forecast because everything that happens in real time is going to have a knock-on effect um, going forwards in the forecast so the forecast has to be adjusted so continued observation, verification and updated forecasts. And if you're <clears throat> listening to this from part of the world that's affected by tropical storms, hurricanes, typhoons, that kind of thing, you'll be used to seeing hurricane advisories, storm advisories that are continually updated to take in the latest information. It's not a case of just changing your mind and changing the forecast and that being a bad thing. Um, altering and amending the forecast is a good thing because you're acknowledging what's happening in the real world uh, and what's actually occurring. You can't just assume that your model forecasts are going to be correct. So these two charts on the top uh, or on the right hand side of the screen are updated projections and updated forecasts that um, are highlighting um, initially um, a higher likelihood of price rising with a 20% likelihood of price dropping and then um, a reassessment of the pattern which began to suggest that the likelihood of a drop was uh, increasing and greater. And all of this is just like tracking a hurricane and uh, trying to pinpoint and narrow down the area that's going to be worst affected. The, um, the cone, if you're familiar with hurricane forecast, the cone projection, which shows where the path of the hurricane is most likely to go. Um, and then, of course, the hurricane becomes a mature, a mature system and makes landfall and um, the forecast impacts what you were predicting um, sort of comes to pass. So that's kind of where we're at now. We're at the stage in this correction pattern where the likelihoods have increased. Um, the um, probabilities of downside movement have increased. And more recently, in, in more recent days, I've issued tweets um, assessing the likelihood of a drop to the 1800 area as being somewhere in the 70% region and a lower probability of price breaking out to the upside. And since since that chart was done, of course, price has continued to break uh, below $1,900 and uh, is currently down somewhere, I think around 1875 or thereabouts. The chart in the bottom right hand corner shows that drop and we've identified a new channel now which has um, support and resistance lines at the same angle. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and um, the Fibonacci retracement level would bring price down to somewhere, I think, around 17, uh, sorry, Becky Pardon, around um, just, just above $1,800. Um, I think it's around 1825, 1826, something like that. Um, but the lower support line on that channel is, is well, pro probably a little bit below that, as you can see, it's below 1825, if I've drawn those lines correctly. Um, so, I mean, in effect, I'm, I'm looking at somewhere between perhaps 1800 and 1830 is the most likely uh, region for price to, to drop to. But it's not unusual to see a panic sort of spike low, as we did um, back in August. You can see that green candle that, that dropped way down below the um, channel support line as it became. Um, so we could see a spike flow coming down to, I don't know, 1775, some, something like that, but it would be very temporary, very short-lived. Um, and in general terms, I think when price reaches this area, right about the election time, which is no surprise, these events tend to line up, um, then price, I expect, um, that would make this an intermediate cycle low and price would uh, reverse rapidly to the upside. And I think we'll be on our way to new highs 
uh, before the end of the year. So that's how I'm seeing things at the moment, and that's how it sort of aligns with the world of meteorology and, and weather forecasting. So I just thought you'd find that a uh, little bit interesting. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, speak again soon.